When you think about the typical testing and development environment, one of the things that comes to mind initially is all the complexities surrounding maintaining a completely separate infrastructure from a CapEx initial investment potentially to a patching, upgrade, maintenance, power and cooling, as well as how frequently you're able to keep that secondary environment in sync against production so that you know that what you're testing and developing is going to apply and be relevant when it's finally moved into production. So one of the things that Veeam innovated using our data lab capability is the use of an on-demand sandbox functionality. Now, the way this works is you don't need any additional hardware investment or infrastructure because it's just another use case of our virtual lab functionality. So we talked about the virtual lab capability in another video, but if you haven't watched that, make sure to check it out so you have a good understanding of everything that virtual lab can enable for you. Now in this video, we're going to take a look at how to set up the on-demand sandbox using a supported SAN vendor stored snapshot. And by doing this, if you do have one of those supported SANs, you can enable the on-demand sandbox much quicker and it's also going to perform much faster because the source is now going to be pulling directly from the production SAN array as opposed to a backup or potentially a replica. So let's look at in the software how you configure this and how you set this up. Now that we're in the lab, let's take a deeper look at exactly how you use the on-demand sandbox functionality but leveraging a stored snapshot instead of a deduped and compressed Veeam backup file. Remember, you do have to have a supported SAN model from one of the vendors that we've built this joint alliance with in order to take advantage of the stored snapshot technology. Now, in order to do this, there's only one small change that you'll have to be aware of when you're configuring in order to use the stored snapshot as a source instead of either a backup or a replica. And that exists under the application group setting. We've already created another video on exactly what the application group is, how to configure it, and you can find that as well as many other how-to videos on veeam.com under the learn section. If we simply edit the properties of this existing application group, one of the things you're gonna notice under source is it is in fact set to a stored snapshot. Now when you add a VM into an application group, you have three choices. You've got from backups, from Veeam replicas, as well as from stored snapshots. Now again, if you do have a supported SAN vendor and model, then you can leverage the from stored snapshots. Now the bonus here is whenever we start a Shure backup job using an application group that's got one of the sources as that stored snapshot, we're simply going to take a snap on the actual production array and present that to VMware so that you get a much better performing data lab experience because instead of coming from a deduped and compressed Veeam backup file traversing the management network over a VM kernel port, you're now actually going to be running directly from a SAN snapshot, giving you much, much better IOP performance because you're now leveraging the resources of your production storage array versus coming from typically much slower backup storage because generally backup storage is designed to be extremely dense and lower cost because you're simply storing backups there. So if you do happen to have one of these supported SANs, you can actually take advantage of this on-demand sandbox functionality as long as you're leveraging the higher tier of our licensing, also known as Enterprise Plus. Now you can see here in the log what we've done is actually powered on all the VMs. We do all the same tests that we would otherwise do when we're doing a sure backup verification, like heartbeat testing, ping testing, application initialization to make sure everything started properly. And then once all that is done, we leave everything running so that you can treat this like a sandbox experience. Now you can see an example of this over here on the left in the vSphere client under our data labs resource pool. You can see that we've got our Linux based proxy appliance powered up, which handles all the routing. And again, we've got other videos on veeam.com under learn on exactly what consists from an infrastructure standpoint of the overall data lab environment. And one of the keys is this virtual appliance that handles all the routing and network address translations that's required to truly create this isolated quarantined environment. 
Now you're also going to see the VMs that we've got turned on followed by a long UUID. And the reason we do this is to make sure we don't run into any conflicts from a naming standpoint. Now the one other thing I wanted to mention is in order to start this environment, you're always going to leverage a sure backup job. Now even though you're not using backups, sure backup is the job name that you're going to create in order to select which application group you want inside the lab environment. And remember, the application group is where you control the source that the data is actually going to be run from. So for an example, from backups, from replicas, or from storage snapshots. Now it's also absolutely imperative if you want to leverage the sandbox functionality when you're building out the sure backup job and you get to the application group selection, make sure that you check this box to keep the application group running after the job completes. Because if you don't enable that inside the Shore backup job, as soon as we go through the basic verifications, like we mentioned a moment ago, the ping test, the heartbeat check, the application initialization stage, we're simply gonna turn everything off and shut it down. But if you check this box, Veeam is going to leave everything running so that you can treat this just like a sandbox environment. Now, when you're finished, it's important that you realize that this is still a running job, which keeps that snapshot open on the storage array. Now, generally you don't want that open for an extended period of time unnecessarily. So what you'll need to do is stop the job. Now you see the job is running now and you're using this as a sandbox environment. You see the VMs turned on. So when you're done doing whatever the test was, whether it was a software upgrade, a patch, maybe you know something like a dev test such as SQL scripting or queries or even a training simulation, literally the use cases are endless, you need to stop the session. And you can do that in one of two ways. You can click the stop button in the ribbon bar at the top or you can just simply hit stop session in the job log window. And in this case, we're gonna stop the session. That will power everything down. It will clean up by removing those VMs from inventory on the vSphere side. And finally, it will delete that stored snapshot that we took initially when we started this overall process. So it's a very clean way to leverage the IOP performance of your SAN array, assuming it's one of those vendors that we've built integration with. Thank you so much for watching this video. And again, for more how-to videos, take a look at veeam.com under the learn section. Enjoy the rest of your day.